I've just walked around to the far bank. I'm set up in that peg just there. Just made the cast across to here. Walked around to collect my lead. I'm just about to clip on a little rig, a little bag. There's fish showing literally down there. But I'm just about to put my bait just underneath this tree, this side here. And then a little handful of bait over the top. Basically, I've just walked around with a bucket and my spoon. I'll just flip the camera and I'll show you guys. There we go, Polaroids, little bucket of bait and my spoon. Just gonna clip on the rig, get it on the spoon, put it out just underneath that bush just off the margin. So it's gonna be really hot tomorrow, so I'm hoping the fish are going to come up on this little shallow plateau as it comes up to the edge. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. go first fish of the session rod's been in the water about 15 minutes and yeah this one absolutely ripped off on the new bait on the uh, crustacean and black pepper boilies and yeah absolutely over moon with this one nice old dark one looking uh, absolutely mint absolutely beat me up on the bank really really lively thing it's gone a bit quiet now but i'll let it rest in the margin for a little bit and it's absolutely full of energy yeah not really much more to say i'm absolutely blown away the rod's been in the water about 15 minutes um, I was just setting the bivvy up and yeah, pulled me right out into the middle of the lake. Absolutely over the moon, 23 pound three ounces. Gonna get a few steals, slip this one back and then get a rod back out. Absolutely buzzing. Hey guys, so as you can see, we're losing the light rapidly now. I arrived at the lake about two hours ago, something like that. I've only actually just got the, the bivvy up and got everything sorted. I've got the rods out straight away. One rod I've put over on a far margin and yeah, done a bit of a special one on that. Like cast the lead over, walked around with a bucket, a bit of bait, um, the bait and spoon and a little PVA bag with the rig on. Clip that up and then put that in with the bait spoon just underneath a little bush over that side. So that's sitting absolutely pretty, love that one. And then I'll walk back around to the peg, sort everything out. And my left hand rod, what I've done is we've got an overhanging tree on the no fishing bank. And I have had a couple of casts to it um, with a bare lead on, got it clipped up. So I've got the, uh, the mark perfectly for the night ahead. And yeah, I've put that one out on a new bait actually. It's a new Kaplan bait. Oh, and I'm getting liners again now. Yeah, so I put that one out on a new bait from Kaplan. It's the black pepper and crustacean boilies. And yeah, within about 15 minutes that one's ripped off yeah that one was only with a little pva bag as well so no no free baits around just a little pva bag with it yeah over the moon first fish of the session within about 15 minutes we're getting the rod out and yeah it's 23 pound three ounces so yeah absolutely buzzing about that got the rod back out after a little while sorting the fish out and getting the photos etc got that one back out and i'm starting to get liners again on it so the fish do come through the margins quite a lot here so it could be fish just pinging off the line but i just feel like it's not i feel like it's there at the other end of the line because i'm not seeing any like jagged line movements and stuff down this end it's just literally the bobbin pulling up and yeah it's exactly what happened just before i had the bike before so yeah hopefully we'll be in with a chance of a good night here yeah the light is going down 
down rather rapidly now and I've just got a cup of tea on, got my bed and bivvy up and everything sorted. I've decided to go with the brolly system today and I haven't put the front on either. Which is taking a bit of a risk here because last time I fished here I woke up about three in the morning and there was a fox about here right in front of my face. So yeah, it's just uh, fingers crossed we don't have that again. If we do then maybe I'll start zipping on the front but yeah, we'll see how it goes. But now I'm absolutely buzzing. I'm gonna sit back, chill for a little bit. Maybe I'll get some uh, get some dinner on. I'm not sure about you guys but when I'm out doing these sessions, even in the summer months, I never get the dinner on until until it's dark out. Doesn't matter how late it gets dark. That's about the time when I eat. It's probably not the healthiest way to do it, especially if you're doing quite a few nights but it just feels right. It just feels right to have dinner when it's getting dark out. So yeah, absolutely buzzing. I'm gonna gonna have this cup of tea and just chill for a bit and if I get any updates then I'll let you guys know. So in terms of baits and rigs um, and the whole approach what I'll do is I'll run you through all of that in the morning yeah we'll have a look at everything in a little bit more detail yeah and I'll just run you through my process of how I arrive to a lake like this this is just a day ticket water I'm only booked on for 24 hours and it's a set peg so you choose the peg and that's the peg you fish from you don't move around so yeah I'll just uh, run you through how I approach that sort of water in the morning. As you can see, I'm still laying in bed. It was a bit of a night, really. Um, I was awake quite a bit. I had quite a few liners, um, no fish. So I ended up having a weird occurrence halfway through the evening, just after dark, really. Yeah, the bobbin pulled up and it was a bit of like a jittery take. And it turns out that the guy that's fishing over the next peg had a fish on. And yeah, it's just come back through and walked out my line basically so that one was a bit of a, a bit of a nightmare managed to uh, slacken it all off in the end and get the rod tip down and his fish obviously came free and then, yeah he landed the fish which was good but yeah for me a bit of a quiet one in terms of fish I managed to do the rod get it all back out there get it on the spot yeah and I had a few a few little liners and stuff like that um, I'm fishing for liners anyway with a little drop on on the line but yeah, there's no no takes or anything yet, but I'm really hopeful for this morning. The, the pressure's changed again. It's um, really high again. This temperature's come right back up. And yeah, I'm hoping that the fish are gonna move back up uh, from the lake and from the deep water um, over to the shallow spot on the edge. But yeah, I've got the whole day. So essentially this is like a day session now. Um, I've got till 7 p.m. I've got quite a long time really. Loads of time to produce a bite, hopefully. We'll see how it goes. Time for me to get up now, have a cup of tea, have a bit of breakfast, uh, have a bit of a chill. I actually woke up a little bit earlier to be honest with you and usually I'd wake up first thing, you know, have a good walk around, find fish, move on them, etc. But there's just no point on a lake like this really because you're booked onto a peg and I've done all my feature finding at the beginning of the trip so I know where the spots are. I haven't got to wake up and try and find fish or anything like that. When I woke up uh, first thing this morning I went out for a wee and I had to look out onto the lake. It was dead calm, no wind and I could see a few fish fizzing up and they were actually over the spot that I'm fishing on. So the rods are just going to stay put. I'm really happy with the hook baits and getting the rods out last night. I spent a bit of time doing it properly. But yeah, it's a bit of a waiting game really. So yeah, I'm just going to leave the rods on the spot for probably the rest of bite time this morning and yeah and then maybe I'll have a look at them around 10 half 10 if nothing's happened um, maybe I'll reel them in freshen up the baits and yeah see how it goes like that if not then maybe I'll fish one of the other spots but I trickled in a little bit of bait last night on two other spots so they're just options just in case but I didn't go in heavy with bait at all this session it's just been fishing for a bite of time yeah that tends to work really well here and you'll see if we get anything Well guys, nothing much has happened just yet, unfortunately. It's about quarter past nine now. I decided to have a bit of a change up. So from this morning, I thought, you know, I'm gonna keep that rod out that I put out last night by the tree mark. And yeah, it looked really good to be honest with you. But um, as the sun started to come up, I started to see a few more fish pushing in and showing a little bit closer into the shallows and also um, up in the water. So I've seen a couple of fish actually on top now, just cruising along their backs out. So I'm not really feeling that spot by the tree because it's a little bit deeper as it drops off there. So what I decided to do was reel that rod in, get a fresh bait on and everything. Um, exactly the same approach. Oh. That is a coot going through my line. Um, so yeah, 
exactly the same approach. A little wafter hook bait on a little slip D-rig. But we'll go into that a little bit deeper later. Yeah, basically what I've done is I've reeled it in and I've been sat here just sorting out a fresh rig and everything like that. And then the wind dropped off. So it's been a little bit choppy this morning, a little bit blowy. And the wind has pushed them right into this corner. So there's only two pegs in this corner, this one here. And then there's a peg just next door, 20 foot away. And there's a gem fished in there as well. And he's fishing right in the corner. Um, he had a couple in the night as well. And yeah, that is just looking really good down this end. So basically what I did was reeled that rod in, start changing over the rig. When the wind dropped off, I noticed that there was a lot of clouding and a lot of fizzing happening, literally 10, 10, 12 foot off the bank, something like that. Not even a rod length. So yeah, just under a rod length out. And they were absolutely sheeting up. And sometimes the bubbles were coming up and they were golf ball size, they were massive. So what I've done is I have just lowered a, um, the rig in over the top of them and just tried to get it to drop down a couple of centimeters away basically. And I've put in a, a few little boilie chops and stuff like that over the top. Nothing crazy, just like a little handful and basically a bite-sized portion. So yeah, I've switched the rods over on the stand. So the one that's out now, um, which is in the shallow mark um, towards the other side, that's uh, that's still out there. And I've moved that over to the left-hand side of my, my bus bars now. And yeah, on the right-hand side, I've just dropped in that, that rod. I had it on the deck for a while because I was, I was quite hopeful that it was gonna go really quick, but maybe I was a bit too optimistic. And yeah, so I decided, put it on the alarm, stop messing around, sunk the line down, so it's basically falling directly down from the rod tip now. Uh, it's super slack because it's yeah just a few feet away from the rod tip really. So I want everything absolutely pinned down and the fish are moving in and out around this whole area. So I'm starting to see them fizzing back up again and they're moving back and forth along a little reed line that I've got to my right hand margin. So yeah, I'm quite hopeful that that will produce a bite today if the weather stays like this. And I mean, it's supposed to get a little bit hotter than this, but if it stays like this, then uh, yeah, we're absolutely laughing and hopefully we've got a good opportunity to uh, catch another one. So yeah, really, really excited. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna chill this morning i'm gonna keep an eye on everything if i feel like that left hand rod isn't gonna do a bite as well maybe i'll move that left hand rod just into the close margin as well again with just a small bite-sized portion of bait over the top um, i'm not gonna go in crazy at all on this session and i'm fishing boilies only i've tried other things here like solid bags work and stuff like that here but because of the types of spots that i'm fishing on and being such a kind of big fish water really i do like to go in with just a boilie approach there are millions and millions of silver fish in here i only have to throw a net in the margin and scope it down and yeah basically you're going to bring in a net full of silvers every single time so i'm just going to basically keep it as i am with the boilie approach and we'll see how it goes so my baiting approach for this session so far has been just boilies only and the boilies i'm going in with actually is a it's a new flavor from kaplan it's uh this one here so it's crustacean and black pepper and yeah basically these are straight from the bag and all I've done is just open the bag up a little bit and just poured in a little bit of the liquid, matching liquids. Um, it's quite a thick, oily, like a syrupy style a liquid. And this stuff absolutely sticks to the boilies. And yeah, I just pour a little bit in the bag, give it a really good shake up. Uh, make sure all the baits are just lightly covered. I don't want to cover them in any other additives or anything like that. Just literally just a little bit of liquid and that's that's it. They're, they're reasonably firm boilies. They're not um, like super, super soft, but I mean, they crumb up under your hand absolutely perfectly, but that gives me loads of confidence that they're going to stay on the hair perfectly. But just to uh, just to put on the hook bait, again, matching wafters. So yeah, these come in multiple sizes um, from about 12 mil through to about 22 mil. So, you know, it's a really good selection of uh, baits there to choose from. And again, a tiny bit of the liquid on them just to keep them glugged up and I've actually had these glugging for quite a while now so and um, they've taken on loads of that liquid loads of the flavor and even when I reeled that rig back in just now it's been out all night it still smell really strong absolutely fantastic in the range there is also matching hardened hook baits and these are pre-glugged so these come in their own liquid full of amino acids and yeah these are really good um, as just bottom baits and yeah absolutely brilliant and that was a fish showing they are really starting to show now so i'm getting absolutely buzzing um yeah hopefully we'll get a chance of catching another lovely one that common ad yesterday i'm not sure if the camera did it any justice really it was actually a really dark sort of chestnut color common i think the camera seems to bleach it out a little bit but yeah maybe it's going to come up already on a big screen but i was absolutely over the moon with that one like i say first fish on a new bait is always an exciting one because when you go in with a new bait especially to a lake that you fish comfortably with other baits and you know they do really well on other baits it does make you um a little bit nervous in the beginning but after smelling the bait and looking at the um you know the consistency of it and knowing a little bit about how it's made and everything i already had quite a lot of confidence in in the bait already so my rig for this session so far i mean i started with bottom baits um 
straight out of the bag bottom baits um, as I showed you and yeah I started with just little hair rigs basically my standard bottom bait rig and oh, uh, can you see there's absolute swarms of gnats and midges here yeah let's get rid of them very annoying on, on the lens so yeah, for my, um, my rigs for this session, um, I started out with just bottom baits on a standard blowback hair rigs. Yeah, uh, I was feeling a little bit of a change after bringing my Marod in the first time. I know that there was, when I had a little lead around in the beginning, there was a little bit of like, debris on the bottom. And especially over by that tree, because there's loads of sticks and bits and pieces around. I wasn't really feeling it on a bottom bait straight out of like that. So I did decide to switch over to a wafter. So yeah, this is the rig that did the bite for me. It's a little slip D rig and a little wafter on there. So it's a 12 mil wafter. A little barrel shape one, a little slip D section, a little bit of strength tubing just to kick it over, and that's probably around six inches long. A little anti tangle sleeve on the end, but yeah, tiny little stripped back section of braid just to uh, make a break in the coating just so it's got that flexibility. And that's really all you need. All I've been doing is nicking on a little PVA bag uh, with a few boilies in, and then just before I cast out, yeah, just dipping it straight in the hook bait dip. And then, yeah, letting that just drip all over the PVA bag and then making the cast. And that's, that's literally all I've been doing. And so far it's proved really successful. One bite, one fish, so you can't argue with that. It's a deadly rig and the hook hold was actually insane. It was it was about an inch or two back in the fish's mouth, dead center. And it was, it was rock solid in there. And I had to give it a little pop to just get it out over the moon with that one. And I can just see now that they're absolutely fizzing up on my spot again in the margin. So I'm gonna put the camera away for a minute and keep my eyes on that rod. So yeah, time to get the kettle back on and I'm gonna sit back, watch the water for a bit and chill. There we go, and that's another fish. And this one is a little bit bigger. 30 pound, one ounce. Put right in that margin spot where they're fizzing up this morning. It's a massive gut on it. Nice pair of shoulders on there. Yeah, absolutely over the moon with this one. I wasn't expecting anything this big, to be honest with you, in this session. I thought maybe I'd get a few of the new stockies and maybe the bigger ones probably be left to their devices, but no, unfortunately for this one, about to slip D rig. And there we go. 30 pounds and one ounce of beautiful common carp. Absolutely mint to the new bait as well. Yeah, I don't want to keep it out too long because it's a bright hot day. I've got it soaking in some water in here in the cradle. Um, but yeah, I just want to get it back as soon as possible, especially this time of year around spawning. These fish have uh, already spawned, but this one still feels really heavy. So yeah, I want to get a few snaps and then let it be on its way. Buzzing. Well guys, what can I say? 30 pounds and one ounce, absolutely over the moon with that one. Bit of a funny mouth on it, but other than that, everything else was in really good condition. And I think these types of waters, like the day ticket type waters, you do find that quite a lot because you find people fishing, not fishing as safe as they could fish. So the fish end up tethered or maybe they're just bullying the fish in too hard. On a water like this, you don't really need to do that. But yeah, absolutely buzzing with that one. 30 pounds and one ounce of lovely common carp. Not as dark as the other one. This one was a little bit paler, but a really deep belly on it still. I don't think this one has spawned, so I didn't want to keep it out of the water too long. Try and get it back as soon as I could really. Just got a few snapshots. Don't think I've got the best shots this time around. Probably not the best on my part. Should have spent a little bit of time doing it and maybe resting the fish a little bit longer in the margin. But I just wanted to get it back. I didn't want to stress it out too much or anything like that. Yeah, the most important thing is about fish safety. Uh, in my eyes, that's more important than just getting a nice shot. But 
yeah, I'll upload the photos that I took to Instagram. If you guys want to check that out, then head over to the same, same name as this channel, Mike Sparks Angler. It'd be uh, amazing if I can catch another one. I feel like there's a really good opportunity to catch another one. They're showing back on the same spot. I've got the rod back out, exactly the same baiting approach. Both fish now have fallen to exactly the same bait and baiting approach. The new bottom baits, but with the wafter on. As you can see, there's a fresh one there, really tied up. It's just sat in the wafter hook bait tub at the moment. Yeah, I like to just pour a little bit of the glug over the top and just leave it in the sun for just a few minutes, just so it dries on. But yeah, that's literally back out on the same spot, less than a rod length out, and they're absolutely sheeting up over the spot now, and I feel like I'm gonna get a take any minute. Yeah, I think what I'm gonna do in a minute, once this activity comes down, if I don't have one, I'm gonna reel the left hand rod in and bring that into the margin as well because it's too good of an opportunity to miss. There's no point fishing to a spot that has previous form if I know there's fish here feeding. This one's got current form at the moment. So yeah, gonna get two rods on. I don't wanna um, fill the swim with lines, unfortunately, but I do feel like I need to get that rod back in this margin. And I'm, I'm fishing super, super slack anyway. So I've got no worries about, you know, like scaring the fish off or anything like that. It's only two rods, it's a two rod ticket on here. So I haven't got to worry about an additional rod. Uh, oh my god, they're sheeting up all over the spot. Yeah, whatever's down there, they are absolutely tearing up the bottom four. All I've put down is a little PVA bag with a few bottom baits on just to make sure that the hook bait sits nicely when it hits the ground. And then just a handful of half baits over the top. So basically, they're about the same size as the wafter then. And that's it, just a, a light scattering, maybe the size of a bivvy, maybe maybe about that. But yeah, just enough to get them moving about for the bait. Seems to be working a treat. The, the hook bait, every time I've brought it in, still smells strongly of the, of the flavor, which is a really good sign. And also, when I'm feeling it down, I'm, I'm getting a hard drop down there. So there's not too much debris down this side, which is actually brilliant. They're moving off and they're coming back, they're moving off and they're coming back. And I think that's how I picked up the last bite. All the activity bubbled up, bubbled up, and then the fish moved off. And I never see anything for a little bit. And then it tore off. I think getting one or two fish coming in feeding, tearing up the bottom, and then maybe the others are coming in to investigate what the clouding is and the whole thing. So um, it's been interesting for me for the baiting approach, to be honest with you. I like to go onto a water and add a bit of bait, but this time around, I decided to just go with little bags. And um, that's worked really well on here in the past with other baits. So I thought I'd just give it a go, the same approach with this bait. That way I know I'm not changing too many variables. It's just the bait that's changed. And yeah, it's worked really, really well so far. Absolutely buzzing. It's really nice to know that your rigs are working perfectly, your baits are working. I mean, I know they work. Same as you guys when you're out on the bank, if you haven't caught one for a couple of trips, maybe you're fishing hard water, you do start to doubt things and doubt does sort of creep into your mind and you end up watching too many videos or reading too many articles about baits and rigging approaches and everything really. And you change too many things up. And so many variables have changed that you don't know what worked when you do catch. So if you just change one thing up at a time until you've refined the decals enough to catch, and then you can start learning. You can't learn too much if you're not catching. You learn about watercraft, that's about it. But in terms of what you're doing right and wrong, you need to be catching or at least getting bites or line bites to be learning like that. So this has been really useful for me. Biggest fish I've had of the year so far. And I think actually it's the, probably the biggest fish on the channel so far as well. That's a new one for new one for the channel. I'm absolutely buzzing about that. Yeah, if you guys have caught anything decent this year, feel free to drop me a comment and let me know how you caught it. Always interested to know what rigs work for you guys and what you have like absolute confidence in. This is a rig that I've got a lot of confidence in. I've fished D-rigs for a long, long time. I find them super aggressive. Just the way that the, the hook bait sits when it's lifting up and it's making the eye of the hook light, essentially, and making the point heavy. So it's just, it drops in the mouth straight away. But yeah, this is just a, a standard day ticket water. And as I mentioned yesterday, like I'll talk a little bit about the approach, how I plan these trips. I booked onto this lake a couple of weeks ago. It's a very busy day ticket water. There's a constant flow of people. I don't think there's ever a day of the year when there's not people on the lake. One of the main things that I'll do is have a look at previous form. Like everybody, best thing to do is just get on the internet, have a good old research, see what's working, see where it's working. And then I like to take a picture of the map. Most lakes have like an aerial view of the map. And then I like to compare that with Google Maps, see where the wind's gonna be moving, if we're gonna get new winds around the time. Obviously you can't plan too far ahead. But yeah, I knew the weather was gonna be good. I had that to base myself on, but this end here, you've got quite a few spots that you can fish to that nobody else can fish to. That's really, really good this time of year some shallow marks up against the far margins on a no fishing bank. So that's always gonna be a fish holder anyway. But yeah, set up with that in mind. And last night, uh, we've got the rods clipped up and everything, fished to the tree, and I did 
did catch that fish within 15 minutes. And yeah, that was, that was obviously a really good point. So I know that everything's working out there. And the spot felt clean anyway when I felt it down. I was leading around and clipping up. I did bump across a few things, a few bits of sticks and stuff like that. I was bearing that in mind. But yeah, put that rig out again straight after that fish and I had nothing for the whole night. That teaches me a lot, actually. It teaches me that um, over that depth of water, they're probably not going to be feeding in the uh, hours of darkness. I did hear a few fish showing, sort of more open water, but that's not really within my reach on this peg, so kept my guns until morning, and I wanted to see out bite time. But yeah, I learned quite a lot from that because this morning I've had lots of fish showing right in the margins and I mean really close in, all up and down this bank and I decided I'm going to reel in one rod from that spot and put that in the margin. And yeah, so I've done a bit of a switch around, changed it all over, fresh baits and everything like that, dropped it in the margin and yeah, probably half an hour and that's away. That was the biggest fish of the session so far. And the fish are still moving back in, even though there was all that disturbance, they're still cruising out and cruising back in over that spot. It's not very deep at all, maybe two and a half, three foot deep. That's a good sign. The wind is pushing right into this corner as well. So that's that's going in my favor. Yeah, those, those kind of things that you need to bear in mind when you approach a busy day taking water like this. First of all, is it a water that you can book on and book a peg? Or is it a water where you can roam around and find the fish? If it was a water that I could roam around, I would approach it definitely differently. I would have arrived yesterday evening and just been doing laps of the lake until I can find a good number of fish showing or at least confidently feeding in an area that I know I can present to comfortably. On a lake like this, luckily managed to book a peg. I arrived to the lake um, with a few things in mind. If you can book a peg, obviously you don't know the conditions, you don't know where the fish are going to be before you arrive. Look at previous form, so that's going to give you a good indicator on you know what kind of pegs to book, whether you're going to be booking a peg that's deep water, shallow water, etc. So I've booked this peg because it's got shallow water, it's got some really good marginal features, and also it's got water that nobody else can approach. That's, that's the things I've, I was bearing in mind when I approached this lake. Again, if you're fishing a lake that is open access, you need to find those fish. But yeah, that's sort of my approach to this kind of water. There's loads of things I'll bear in mind as well, obviously seasonally, like baiting approaches and what kind of baits you're going to be using. I know the fish spawned on this lake a couple of weeks ago, so I've gone in with a bait that's actually quite salty. They do crave quite a lot of salt around post spawn, so either mix in Himalayan rock salt with your bait, or you can go in with a bait that's a really good food source. This is a fish meal bait and it's really salty, got a real strong pungent smell about it, and it's just seemed to do the trick so far. In the winter months, obviously you go for baits that break down a little bit easier. You know, if you've got no nuisance species in the lake at all, that's a really good opportunity to go in with, you know, sweet corn, little yellow pop-ups, stuff like that. Sig rigs work really well. They're a good opportunity all year round. If this lake was a little bit deeper, maybe I would go for zigs, but because I'm fishing spots that are really shallow and I'm seeing them prop cloud up, I know they're down there feeding on something. I'm not worried about presenting up in the layers. Absolutely over the moon with the previous capture and hopefully we've got an opportunity to catch another one. Well guys, it's just gone about half three. Not really much to report at the moment. As expected, the sun's out in full force. It's a scorching hot day today and loads of fish are showing on the top, but unfortunately surface fishing is banned on this lake. I'm not really feeling zigs to be honest with you. I'm just not feeling it. I'm still getting a fair bit of fizzing coming up and I'm fishing on shallow marks anyway. So I'm just gonna persist with the way that I'm fishing. Another hour or two and it will start to be bite time again. So we're booked on till seven. So still got a couple of hours left and it's all to play for. I'm gonna keep the rods pretty much where they are. I feel like my left hand rod where I put it over to that far margin I will probably just keep it there because it's on a good spot and I've seen some fizzing coming out there. I'm going to play it by ear. If I see loads of fizzing coming in close again maybe I'll move my left hand rod in the margin as well but for now they're going to stay where they are on exactly the baits and rigs that they will put out on. Uh, I feel really confident at the moment I'm just going to put a little sprinkling of fresh bait over the top ready for when bite time does come. Hopefully we'll be able to maximise any chances that we get. But there we go guys so that's pretty much the session over now. We're in the last hour about 50 minutes left nothing's happened yet this afternoon the sun has been absolutely beating down yeah it's just not really felt right for a bite on the bottom for sure still didn't feel zig worthy i've seen other people using zigs and nobody's getting anything i still feel like bite on the bottom is going to be the way to go we've got about 50 minutes to go i've still got that spot over by the tree and i've got that rod down in the margin just on my right hand side unfortunately the fish haven't really moved across this afternoon i was expecting them to move back up like they did yesterday evening up into the shallows but nothing yet well thanks for 
for watching guys um, hopefully you've enjoyed this one i've really enjoyed this session absolutely over the moon two bites two fish landed actually 20 pounder and a 30 pounder so yeah you really can't argue with that especially using a new bait absolutely over the moon but well cheers for watching guys and hopefully you guys are going to enjoy this one i've really really enjoyed filming this one and just being out fishing on the bank again yeah make sure you give me the thumbs up do all the liking and subscribing as everyone says and i'll see you guys on the next one